Hello, so we're talking about vibrato, which is notoriously difficult in some ways to teach, um, but in other ways very easy to do. Hopefully many of you will have experienced doing vibrato quite naturally, just part of your sound. Um, so this video is about both how to do it, there are different ways of making vibrato, and also what to do with it, because I think that's actually possibly even more important and they are both linked to each other. Vibrato should be part of your sort of toolbox of expressiveness. We've also already dealt with tone colour and dynamics and this is another one. I think it's really important to listen to a lot of different types of vibrato. Um, singers are a great uh, model to us for flute players um, and they do it in in a similar way to the way we do it um, and they have the same problems with uh, trying to s describe how it's done um, but there are huge amounts of variety in how singers put their vibrato onto their voices same with string players, listen to some string players um, and other flute players and, and a lot of different flute players we all sound different with our vibrato and sometimes it's quite a distinctive um, part of our sound so you can almost identify who's playing by their vibrato. For your basic vibrato in your sound, where it really comes from is your innate sort of ideal of sound, which is why I think it's a really good idea to listen to many people. Um, because your ideal might change, mine certainly has over the years, because I used to do a very natural vibrato when I was 16, which was probably like that, quite slow, quite sort of full, um, and I loved it, I thought it just sounded nice, but I didn't think about it at all, um, and it was only later that I realised that it can be far more expressive than that. The um, several different types of vibrato that you can do are a slow, deliberate vibrato, which starts with a ha, 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 ha kind of movement. So you can hear a fluctuation in both loudness and slightly in pitch. If I slowed that down even more, that's what happens. So there's a bit of pitch fluctuation and a bit of loudness fluctuation. Then um, what you do find on YouTube a lot of is exercises for how to speed up what I've just done. Using a metronome is great. Um, I don't even really need to repeat what they've said, but some people do a click and then you do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then you change it to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, until you get to a really quite a nice fastish vibrato. Some people have a natural vibrato which um, is slightly uh, like a kind of folk vibrato stroke nanny goat vibrato as it's called. Here's um, an example of me trying to do nanny goat vibrato. So that's a kind of quite a fast, um, insistent vibrato. The reason for having a variety of vibrato is... I'm going to demonstrate it using a bit of the cantilena from Poulenc's Sonata for flute and piano. Um, just, um, and first of all I'm going to just play with um, the same vibrato the whole time.
Okay, so that's probably how I played it when I was 16. And now I'm going to do varied types of vibrato on that same phrase. At the end of that phrase, a very kind of very shallow vibrato, not very fast either. But during the middle of some of the moving notes, it was quite fast, I think. And I think it started off quite gently as well. It's not something I often think about really consciously while I'm playing. I just think about what do I want this note to sound like? What do I want to happen in this phrase? And then the vibrato helps me to bring that out. Here's another version of the cantilena with a fast and quite insistent vibrato. breath. So I guess what I was trying to say was that the playing with just one type of vibrato can make the sound rather monotonous and it helps your audience to switch off if it's always the same. So in conclusion you can do two things. Work up from a slow ha 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 kind of vibrato production and speed it up and eventually it should oscillate between your larynx and your diaphragm is what the current thinking is um, and the second thing is to use your natural fast vibrato if you've got one and slow it down so just to try and moderate it and then hopefully the two will meet in the middle ideally do both so that you've got both methods in your repertoire. In the Baroque era they used to use fingered vibrato so it was um, not actually done with the breath at all. For example they might play which is rather like in modern music so we've kind of come, come a nice full circle since the Baroque era. Uh, that would, call, would be called battement or flattement. Um, and I think they even had a, a lip vibrato as well, uh, which is what brass players do. I can't even do that, I don't think. Each one of these methods is um, an attempt to uh, enhance the sound with more than just the plain sound. So you can see that having a mixture of different types of sound production there is going to be an expressive tool.